Hey everybody, I'm Jason and this is Jay's Project Garage. So it's Friday. I haven't made a video in a couple days, but I've been busy doing stuff. I got a lot done on the house and I gotta get going back on the 69. And I decided I think I'm gonna take another week. I think I'm gonna take three weeks off between between jobs. I mean I got all my PTO time from my old company and I'm getting paid the entire time, so why not? Just hang out at home and get some stuff done here and make some shitty videos for you guys. And in today's news, there's a hummingbird flying around the shop, so if you see him, don't get scared. He's not a man-eater. I wanted to add something before I get into what we're going to talk about today. I wanted to add something about the 5-liter. The, the problem with getting old is you, you kind of lose your train of thought and you forget stuff. I don't want to hear it, especially out of you, Jeff. I'm serious, dude. You give me crap about that all the time. But when I was talking about boost and pushing down on the crank, the side effect is it wants to tear the mains out of the block. And I've seen it on small block Chevys, I've seen it on small block Fords, I've seen it on all of them. And that's why a lot of the new engines, the way they're built, it's kind of a deep skirted block design and they got cross bolts and stuff into the mains. A lot of the new engines are six bolt main. One of the first times I saw saw that, um, I mean, they've been doing cross bolted stuff since the 60s. The the 427 side oiler was famous for that. Um, the LSs are a lot of them are six bolt main, but the first time I saw it was actually on the mod motors, uh, the 46 dual red cam deal. They used a cross bolted design, and I think I think they were six bolt mains. So that the bottom of the block is like super stout, and that's why the new blocks will handle so much more power than the old ones would, is because they put a little more thought into it. It's like we need to stabilize the bottom end of this thing, so it doesn't matter what these people are using it for, it's going to hold up, and they do. Man, they're that's why the Coyote is so good. That's why the LS is so good, is because the, it's made the bottom of the block so rigid. And there was, and those lessons learned by stuff like the five liter when they ran into the crack problems and stuff. So they actually learned, they learn by their mistakes and they make corrections and then we wind up better for it. So going back and bad mouthing anything, especially the five liter, not knowing its history, I don't know. It's kind of uneducated and you just, you have to understand where we came from to understand why we are where we are. That's all I'm saying. So today, we're going to be talking about more about harmonics and connecting rods and weight. Hey, before we get into that, can somebody help me understand something? Because I, I think I missed, I missed something somewhere. My, I think it was my last video. It's got like 290 some views or something crazy. I mean, I'm lucky to get like 40 or 50. I, and it's been like over the, since last night, I got on there this morning and it, it's just, I mean, it's not a million views or anything. It thing's not going viral, but it's, what did I do different? Tell me what I did different and leave it in the comments down below. I'm genuinely curious. But t today, This is a connecting rod out of a Ford 460. That thing's stout. But don't lull yourself into a false sense of security because everything has its breaking point. And the thing looks pretty badass, but it will break. And we'll talk about why in just a few minutes. There's something else I want to show you guys. Hang on, ready? Rod and piston out of a top fuel car. Morgan Lucas's top fuel car. Bill Miller engineering uh, aluminum connecting rods. 10,000 horsepower. Can you see the size of that thing? It's big because it's aluminum. But these break too. Fairly often. And this thing went through something weird because the the piston pin is stuck in there and the ring lands are like scrunched. I would have loved to have seen this run to see what happened. 
I've been outside. I'm all hot and sweaty. I'm working. But I wanted to add something about the aluminum rods. The reason they use them is to reduce weight. And it softens, softens the blow. It absorbs some of those harmonics. My opinion. Here's another one. This is out of a 900 horsepower, 8,000 RPM, uh, dirt late model, small block Chevy. This is what I was talking about. You want longer connecting rod, you want it with a shorter piston, and, you, and see how the, close the pin is to the oil control ring. Uh, that's the problem they ran into a lot when they first started doing 347 kits. That oil or that piston pin was actually up behind the rings and you'd have oil consumption problems. I think they've since fixed that. They've changed the piston design and they're using thinner ring packs so the, the rings are moved up closer to the, the top of the piston so they don't have oil consumption problems like they used to. I don't normally do, I don't normally recommend stroker kits and stock blocks. They're capable of making more power and that's not good for a stock block. And they're going to create more harmonics and that's not good for a stock block and there's more reciprocating weight which is definitely not good for a stock block so you go with a shorter shorter piston and this is a stock style chevy 350 piston you can see the difference and there's a huge difference in weight so you want to get all that weight out of the piston and get it Move down closer to the center of the crankshaft. I'm getting old. What can I say? I keep thinking of stuff that I forgot to add into the video while I'm sitting there editing it. This is a connecting rod for a 351 Windsor. This is a connecting rod for a 302. You can see the difference in the two. The longer stroke is why they made the, the, the deck taller. Um... This is the rod that I showed you in the last video, run-of-the-mill C8 forged 302 connecting rod with the little 5 16 bolts, 351, 3 8 bolts. This is actually the truck marine rod. And if you hear somebody say something about a football rod, can you see that bolt? Shaped like a football. That's why they're called football rods but it leaves more material in this part of the rod. Can you see how this one's machined? It's just got the regular bolts in it. Can you see how much more material, material got left there? And these have their limits too, but this is probably the best factory connecting rod that they made for the 351. Now I did the math, but that old age thing kicked in and I don't remember it all, but I think that at 700 RPM, this piston is getting to top dead center 11.3 times per second, I think, per second at 700 RPM. So at 7,000 RPM, it's going to top dead center 117, something like that, times per second. And remember Newton, that crazy bastard? Objects in motion want to stay in motion. So when this piston's heading towards a, up towards top dead center, it wants to keep going. And the only thing that's going to stop it is this connecting rod. And every time it gets to the top, it comes to an abrupt halt and it jars the crankshaft and the connecting rod. But it's a pretty good jolt. And every jolt gets transmitted into the crankshaft. And that's the vibration or harmonics that I was talking about. And it's not just the weight, it's every time you have a, a com compression, or not compression, a power stroke. When it gets to top dead center, or before top dead center in the spark plug fires, but when it gets to top dead center and it starts heading back down, that initial burst is another jar in this whole assembly and in the crankshaft. That's where harmonic balancers come in because it helps pick some of that up. But it can only do so much. Now I say harmonic balancer, especially with Fords, because that's exactly what they are. My opinion is if it has a weight on it, if the engine is externally balanced, then it is a harmonic balancer. 
If it's a small block Chevy that's internally balanced, then it's a harmonic dampener. Semantics. Okay, I just want to reiterate that 99.9% .9 of what's in this video is just strictly my opinion. So take it for what it's worth. My opinion is the reason a rod would fail is because it's being over RPM'd for the weight of the piston. The lighter the piston is, the higher the RPM the rod can sustain. So if you see a set of connecting rods that say these are good for 500 horsepower, I don't know that I'd want to buy those because how are you going to say where I'm making 500 horsepower? So lighter piston, uh, longer connecting rod, try to get all the weight towards the center of the, the crankshaft, close, close to the center of the crankshaft. The less weight you have flailing around, the better. Something else that I'll, I see all the time on, I used to see it all the time on the forums and definitely on Facebook, but you got those guys that are, oh, just put some hard block in there up to the water, the water pump holes and, and you shouldn't have, block will handle way more power. You know, there's no coolant passages that go from side to side, so really the only thing you're doing is reinforcing the cylinder walls. You're not doing anything for the center of the block. Now, 351 Clevelands were weak in the cylinders. They didn't make the cylinder walls that thick, and they had core shift problems and all kinds of other stuff. There's, I've actually seen blocks that wouldn't even take a 30 over because there just wasn't enough material there. Like, that's a, man, that's a bummer. I, I paid way too much for this block that's not even usable for anything. But it happens. Um, luckily, quality's gone up, and they don't have problems like that as much as they used to with core shift and everything else. I think they use like permanent molds and all kinds of stuff that they didn't before. And they're, obviously there's still sand involved, but hard block in a five liter or 351 Windsor block, in my opinion, is pointless. You're not gaining anything. I mean, they're not weak in the cylinders, they're weak in the mains. And their hard block isn't gonna fix that. And have a, a main girdle, that's another one I see all the time. I put a main girdle on it and make sure you stud it. Now I am 100% on board with studding it. But the girdle, my opinion is, the only thing that thing's good for is holding the parts together after the block breaks. I've used them. I've put them in customers' engines before. But were they of any benefit? I have no idea. Customer wants to use a stock block and I'd really like to put a girdle on it. Well, it's your 300 bucks. I'm not going to tell you no. I'll do whatever you tell me to do. It's You're paying for it. Just, But I'll make sure I put my opinion in there. I don't think these things actually do anything. I don't see how they could possibly limit cap walk. I don't know. There's an awful lot of guys that do use them. But I've seen a lot of broken blocks with pieces of girdle still in there too. So I don't know. Uh, that's probably it. That's, that's enough. I got stuff to do. Um, I don't know. I'll find something to do. But, you guys get out in the shop and work on your projects. Have a great day, and I'll see you sometime this weekend, probably.